We're on easy street And it feels so sweet Cause the world is but a treat When you're on easy street Welcome to the Easy Street Radio Show Hosted by Rob Scribner Grab a cup of coffee and let's get started Our videos are made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags Available at Amazon right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Easy Street. I want to um, thank you for joining the show. And you can find Easy Street on uh, Spreaker, several platforms, um, Spotify, etc. You can find them all down in the uh, description below. And, uh, yeah, so one of the things I wanted to talk to you about today is people that want to start their own radio station. And uh, there's several ways to go about it. And we uh, are just uh, folding up uh, a radio station we ran for four years. Uh, why why we're doing it is, is uh, just because we're tired. <laughs> I've got so many things I'm doing. Obviously, I do podcasts like this. I own a uh, homestead. We do Ranger Rob Country Living. We have tons of things we're doing and so many new projects coming on. There was time to let it go. So... Back four years ago, I, I found out and started seeing uh, people with radio stations, uh, internet radio stations. And uh, I looked into also uh, what they call nonprofit uh, internet stations where you can actually be on real air and have uh, be out 150 you know, miles or something like that. And you had to be nonprofit status, but super regulated. Uh, but internet radio station was amazing. I uh, I thought, wouldn't it be cool? I got music I really love. I love classic rock and all that kind of stuff. I'd love to have a radio station just play the kind of music I liked. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can make a little money with it and stuff. So I started actually two radio stations. I started Good Talk, Good, um, Good Music Radio, and Good Talk Radio. I thought one would be cool with just devoted to music. Another one would be devoted to talk radio shows. And uh, so I went probably, I think, the f- one year with both um, and uh, realized that, first of all, you need to know the cost. So to have a radio station, you need software. Now, you can either run your software from a computer or you can do it in the cloud. We chose the cloud uh, through Sam Broadcasting because if we had power outages or a computer decided to do a uh, reboot, you know how Windows is and stuff like that, your radio station would go down. So I found the most practical software to use was Sam Broadcaster, uh, the cloud version. And uh, you get like 30 gigabytes of data on there that you can have, which is it's enough. It's enough. Uh, we ran up to 4,000 different uh, songs that we uh, purchased and we bought them like through Amazon and bought the MP3s and we loaded them and stuff like that. But you got to remember, you can't be playing music anytime you want. You guys know that Um, there's copyright issues. So if you're going to have a radio station, what's the next thing you need? License, a license to play the music. So that was, uh, we went through one company at a time. It was called us. Oh, I remember they're out of business now because they were not on the up and up, but eventually we found, I'll just go straight to the one we use now, which is um, Live 365. And I can tell you that's going to cost you about $59 a month uh, on up. Uh, You could actually broadcast directly from them if you want, but you're really limited with their abilities of, of actually using them for not only your broadcasting, but also your legal music. Um, all, but all your music, all your stream needs to go through them, which gives you licensing to play music, um, copyrighted music. So that's cool. You want to do that. The Sam Cloud, by the way, cost me about $29 a month. No, 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 no. Yeah, about $27 a month, I believe, uh, for that service. So you're looking at about... Um, now, we had a higher license in Live 365, so we were paying probably around $100 a month to $120 a month for the service, <clears throat> the two services you have to have. Um, both are really easy to find. Uh, the licensing, you want to run, you basically you run your, your. Um, in fact, let me show you a picture. Um, there it is. This is um, our um 
And I, I'm doing these now because we're closing down our radio station. Um, not because I was losing money. It was actually making money. Um, in here is where we controlled all of our music, all of our shows, and all of our commercials and jingles. <clears throat> and uh, I'm not going to show you how to use this software. I'm just showing you this is what we use for Good Talk Radio. Uh, this also allowed us, <clears throat> excuse me, to uh, set up our scheduling for all of our different shows. So you can see in here, this goes from 24 hours of how all the shows played through here. You know, um, whether it's just music, we did. <clears throat> so later on, by the way, I need to explain. <clears throat> we shut down Good Music Radio and merged it with Good Talk Radio because on Good Talk Radio, when we're not having a talk show, we play music. So basically everything you see in red here is when we played music. And we also had some DJs like uh, The Shuffle and myself. I did a show called Ranger Rob uh, uh, Rednecks uh, World of World. And it was just a radio show. And uh, you can see like Easy Street, the show you're watching right now, played during the week uh, in different uh, areas. And we, we want to actually create a show that was a half hour long because there wasn't a lot of half hour shows out there. It was really great to fill in the gap. And so uh, that was one of the reasons why we actually started Easy Street. Um, but anyway, um, let me take this back up here. So <clears throat> this is the software that actually holds all the music, holds all the shows, all the commercials, all the jingles, all the station IDs. And then this creates a stream. And that stream goes to um, a platform that we called uh, Live 365. And then the end product, I guess I should try to show you. Um, let me do this. www.cutt cutting edge radio network. Uh, um, let's see if we get that pulled up. So this is our radio network. So we're changing a little bit. And our radio network, we have lots of podcasts and we had the radio stations. And so, uh, <laughs> this is the combination. Um, we also had a website called Good Talk Radio, but now I'm uh, redirecting that to a different location. That's why I didn't go there. But this is um, Cutting Edge Radio Network. <laughs> Still says Arizona, but we're actually in Oregon. But um, the but <clears throat> this button here actually goes through. Um, we want people to listen to Good Talk Radio only through Live 365. So if I press this button, you will see it says click to play. And a player comes up, says Good Talk Radio. Uh, it will load here in a minute. And you can hear we're playing this. Um, and it's working right now. <clears throat> this is Sons of Liberty. But anything that goes through our stream is uh, is legally covered for copyright issues. Um, so that's the cool part. So um, basically, this is a, that's how the structure works. Okay, so um, the first thing you start asking yourself <laughs> is, okay, I'm spending $100, $120 a month. <clears throat> uh, as you can see, uh, let me bring you back to another screen. As you can see, it takes money and equipment to uh, get things going. For example, I have a, uh, uh, when I do not only my shows, but you know, it depends on what people do with their shows, but we have a mixer and we have uh, microphones. This is a very expensive one, but you don't have to spend that much. Um, you will notice shows with good quality sound and ones that don't after a while. And you really do want to get good microphones in the, in, in the future, but start with what you got. <clears throat> so here's the problem <laughs> is you've got this radio show. You say, oh, I'm going to make money with commercials and stuff. No, you're not. You're going to get, you might get some folks that'll do some stuff and pay you to be on there. But, uh, you know, you got to build up your numbers. You got to get listeners. So instead of me trying to push um, listeners, let's see if we tilt my screen here. I don't have my lights on, so I'm going to have a little trouble with the green screen today. Um, <clears throat> how do you get to make money? Well, it's like, well, I'm going to charge people to be on my tel uh, radio network. And the first thing he says, how many view, how many people listen to your radio network? And he go, well, it's new. <laughs> Not very many. <laughs> Maybe one, two. <laughs> and it's like, 
why would I pay you money to put my show on your radio network? And then other people just have websites and they just let you stream your show on their website. Well, do they market their website with a hoot? But <clears throat> so let's assume that you're, you're new and you got your radio station going. He's like, how am I going to pay, you know, make some money with this thing? Well, we uh, <clears throat> started out trying to get commercials and, and we get donations once in a while, stuff like that. But um, I decided to use my platform differently. And oh, by the way, and, we, and so we started making our own podcast show. So we have She Said, He Said, Easy Street, and some other shows, Range Rob Has Your Back, and RV Talk Radio. And uh, we, at the time, we used to have Arizona Talk Radio until I moved out of Arizona. It didn't make much sense, did it? Anyway, um, and then I put those on platforms on Spreaker. So I created a Cutting Edge Radio Network Spreaker. And in all of our shows, if you go to Spreaker and you, you type in Cutting Edge Radio Network, um, in fact, let me do that for you. Um, should be fairly easy to do. Um, bingo. Right here is our Spreaker account. And this actually has all of our shows on it. Uh, oh, you can't see it. Ha, ha, ha. Guess I should put it back on the screen, huh? Add to the stream. There it is. Spreaker. So, <laughs> sorry. This is our Cutting Edge Radio Network Spreaker. Uh, we actually make pretty good money off of this. This is monetized. So we had Arizona Talk Radio in here. Easy Street, all of our episodes go on here. We also have a, um, a thing where we do old-time radio shows. We had another show is called Paradigm Chimes. I haven't been making any of those, but it's Law of Attraction and stuff. Um, I had a morning show uh, music, but it's like, well, since I'm doing Ranger Rob, Rednecks Rule the World, I pretty much focused on that one. Uh, RV Talk Radio, um, uh, we do still do shows there. She said, he said, we still do shows here. And then we also have a, a radical part of our podcast is when I get kind of mad at the society, I create a show called We Want Real News. Anyway, so uh, if you don't think I'm making money on here, I'll just show you a little peek here. Um, we make over a hundred and some odd dollars a month here. You can see our income here. You can see how much is in the current balance. My last payment, which was just a couple of days ago, was $180. So that's all I'm going to show you. So does that pay for the radio station? Yep. <laughs> but at the time, it wasn't that big at, uh, then. So uh, let me go back to uh, just showing you the radio station. I know it's not much to see, is it? So uh, the other clever thing is, it's like, I I wanted to be more conventional. So let me uh, get back to this other screen. Gosh, jumping around the screens here is getting, driving you crazy. So here, I'm back. <clears throat> How could I pay for this radio station and make some money? Well, that's where these came in. <laughs> They're called Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. I actually made my own product. And I have two other products, too, of Ranger Rob Pubuigas, where they're in rolls and also one with a dispenser. And we developed this, this these poopy bags. They're different than other poopy bags. They're really good bags. And uh, uh, we started doing our own commercials and stuff on our radio station to sell our product. And those people that were, uh, instead of us charging people to be on our radio station, all we asked is one. You give us shout outs that you're on Good Talk Radio. And two, would you push our Ranger Rob poopy bags? So that was a great situation. So all these podcasts, all these shows we have, were on Good Talk Radio for free. <clears throat> if you're paying to be on a radio network, I'll tell you right now, you're being ripped off. Um, you don't shouldn't have to do that. You could do just as well without a radio network at all. <clears throat> I just showed you what you can do in Spreaker. So uh, us, to make it work, we took the Ranger Rob poopy bags. We have Spreaker and um, that didn't come another way, too. Can't remember what the other one is. Anyway, uh, well, and our YouTube channel makes money. And we do our podcast in conjunction with um, Good Talk Radio and, and Cutting Edge Radio Network. That put us in profit territory. Always been in profit, always made, uh, covered the bills. 
either I broke even or we made profit. It wasn't until I actually decided to start a TV uh, station on Roku where, uh, the, you know, that was another $300 out of our company budget. And um, I started that and uh, I'm kind of old school. I, uh, I'm a handshaker in a way, but I also have morals and ethics. And so when we did this, I knew that I was going to have to ask people that wanted to go from radio, they're already doing live streams and stuff, if they wanted to be on TV. And and it's hard to get all the answers you really want when you want to know about TV. But I knew that I was going to have to charge these people um, to help cover our costs because we're now in negative. And so they did. A lot of them trust me because they've known me for years. And so, but I didn't want to charge them a lot. I didn't, you know, I know I'm pumping out an extra $300, but now um, uh, I'm going to ask them to only give us maybe $20, $25 up to $50 uh, a month to help cover the cost. I wasn't trying to make a profit out of my, I, I was going to grandfather all of our people from Good Talk Radio, et cetera. Now, of course, when you have a radio station, People want to know how many viewers you have, and that's what I want to talk to you about also. Um, when I uh, – um, get this back up. When I had have uh, uh, Sam broadcasting here, usually you can see um, – well, they say you could see how many people you could see on the sh channel, but we've had all kinds of things running with the, uh, listening to the station. This thing would not register anybody. It's like, okay, well, that's a really bad data. Then we went to Live 365 and we show some people that you uh, go through there um, would show up. And then also on the website, we'd have hundreds of people showing up on there. And I couldn't really ever have good data. So that's why I did not feel bad about not charging our clients because I really could not tell them exactly what our um, listener base was, even throughout the years. And I knew we were growing and I know people are listening and all that, but I couldn't get firm numbers. And so uh, I can't consciously really want to charge people to be on Good Talk Radio unless I could give them really good analytics. And uh, so, but so if they're not being charged, are they going to complain? Heck no. Um, when you have a radio show, you're trying, every listener is important. And I learned that from the big guys. When we had a uh, Leo Roundtable, we had um, uh, Sons of Liberty, those guys, uh, I'd talk to them personally and they'd say, I don't care if you just get me one listener, you're important. You're just as important as a big radio station. Um, we actually were doing good. We were actually, um, we're, and we, and to this day we're doing good, but it was time to let it go. I was just tired. I says, cause you got to remember when you do a radio station, all these guys, uh, you got to upload, a, um, you know, you hit this little button over here and you have to upload their files. Let's say I was going to, uh, load up, uh, you hit this little button here and you, let's say I go into my library, I go to my playlist and I look for, let's say, uh, the John Smith show and I click on that. And then I've got to upload the MP3 that he sent me for his show, which this is my desk. Uh, this is my desktop. And I'd find an MP3 that I put on my desktop and upload it. So every day I was uploading the, um, MP3s or shows to the station. And if I went into uh, John's account, you see, I always kept, so, you know, let's say John was sick one day, I'd keep a couple of his shows on here because um, he was always playing at a certain time. And if I didn't have a new show in here, it'd start from the beginning here and, and play a, a rerun. And so all these different radio shows we have, we all have files in it. So that's why you needed, I uh, I had a 30 gig account. You can see I was always pushing the limit right up here in the top where you can see my mouse. We're at 28 gigs and I get really, really full. And then I'd have to go into like John's account and, you know, maybe highlight one show and, and get rid of it. Um, and the software is a little bit finicky. Let's see if I can get, there we go. And I go remove and permanently remove the one file. And that opened up a little bit more space 
for other shows. And I had to do that with all the radio shows we had here. So uh, that's kind of how that worked. Um, what do I got behind here? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so what I showed you, now everybody's going to do this different. Every radio station's different. We found is having our own podcast made us money through other means. Having our own product made us money through other means. Um, and then we get donations because people dislike your radio station and occasionally you'll get a, a donation. Um, but when you get someone that's uh, going to do commercials, they're going to want to know your analytics. They're going to want to know how much traffic you're actually making. And if you can't answer that really well, then uh, I would suggest you don't charge people for your radio station um, unless you really, really found a way to get good analytics. Um, and then maybe look at charging these people. Other people, by the way, you see where I'm at here? This is, it looks like I'm in a log cabin and all that stuff. This is a green screen. So some radio stations have created little um, studios in their houses and stuff like that. Some people have even leased buildings, set up big green screens, a bunch of tables, bought a whole bunch of microphones, and uh, uh, would have people in their local areas that want to do a radio show come in like once a week and pay them for the studio time. What's the benefit of that? Well, they don't have to buy all those microphones. They don't have to worry about the mixers. Um, if they're being live streamed and stuff, the studio would take uh, kind of set them up to be live streamed and stuff like that. Now, I'm going to say this, and I'm sure other networks would be mad, is like, why? <laughs> you can do all this so easy. So you see me on a piece of software right now. I'm not even using XSplit anymore or OBS. I'm using just StreamYard. And uh, it uh, has a built-in green screen thing. So I have a green screen behind me. I put a picture of what looks like a log cabin. And this is just a room in my house. I'll, and this is a devoted studio that I have. And I can make a beautiful screen with good mic sound and the whole works. And I can transmit this show from this software to F Facebook, YouTube, any of the platforms that would that would receive a stream if I want to. Why would I go to a studio? Because um, you don't have to, you know, this is a $500 mic, but you can start off with a $39, $69 mic from Amazon with a boom already. Uh, start with a basic stuff and work your way up. It's a great way to go, and you can stream and, and actually put your show on Spreaker or, or Podbean or a bunch of these other platforms, and then you can send uh, ask them to distribute your show to other platforms like Spotify and Google Play and a bunch of other ones um, through those systems for free. Uh, the systems, uh, now Spreaker and those things, those cost like $19 a month. But why would you pay 25, 35, whatever dollars a, a week to use someone's studio when you can do this so easily from your own house? Um, now, there is, you know, it's kind of nice to have a studio where you, you can come in, everybody kind of meets up, you run a show, they take care of all the files, all that stuff, and that's just fine and dandy. But what with uh, 25, 35 dollars a shot? That's a lot of money. That's, um, I'm running an entire radio network in my own podcast for less than that. So, uh, you know, it all depends on what works good for you. You may not want to mess up with mess with all this stuff, but there are so many YouTube channels to show you how to set up your microphones, how to do a show, how to live stream. Um, you can learn. Everybody can do this. And once you find a simplified software, and we've gone through all kinds of software over the years, this StreamYard is probably the easiest to use um, and makes it really easy to do a presentation, easy to uh, sh you know show pictures on the screen. I can make it as big as I want, make it just that. Um, go back to myself. Um, I can have guests on here, which is really easy. This software does not use your CPU uh, usage because it all works on the cloud. 
So uh, it works really well, so much better than Zoom and some of the other features I've used where they, it takes some of your computer power. I've had up to 10 people on this, and I think the last she said, he said, we had 10 people on it for an hour. I don't have the strongest internet in the world, and we kicked ass. Sorry. <laughs> we did really good. So anyway, these are things about if you have a show, things you should know about. If you want to start your own radio station, uh, you generally know the cost. Just plan on 100 bucks or so a month. Um, understand that you're going to create a lot of work for yourself. How are you going to pay your, you know, and the other thing is like, okay, you paid for the software, you paid for the licensing, and are you paying for your time and labor? Your time and labor is worth something. Well, I, I did that through my own products, and I did that through my own Spreaker account and some of my other things I do uh, with Amazon and some other um, platforms where I make money. Um, so I did pay myself. It might have been only five bucks an hour, but I did pay myself. So our radio station was successful. This this was a successful radio station. And I could have taken it bigger. And I could have gone more bolder. And I could have been a more of a salesman and all that stuff. But um, it wasn't my style. I don't like to sell that much. Unless I, if you ask me to talk about the Ranger Rock poopy bags, I could sell these. Why? Because I built them. I know how good they are. I know they're a better bag. I know they're deeper and they got handles. Da, 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 da. This is a good product. I can sell this. But um, when I'm asking people to pay me to have a show on my radio station, things like that, um, it uh, it's too competitive. It's very competitive. And that's why you see everybody going, Ruku the, I want to do a Ruku account and stuff. And you just saw we did another video just earlier why you should. That's not exactly a good idea. It's pretty cool. It's nothing cooler than seeing your show, this this show right here on TV, but uh, it's not there yet. Um, it could change. And some people may be getting on early and Ruku improve some things, but really you can make a killing without that. You can do fine as an independent podcast and an independent radio station and either break even or make money. There's so much more I could have done, but this was good for me. And you have to realize that the time I'm in here loading files and taking care of that stuff is time away from the family, time away from my personal time. Along with my homestead, I have a five-acre homestead. I've got chores to do. And what's cool about what I do with mine is I turn my podcasts and shows into what I do in my homestead, which is a, what we call a Ranger Rob Country Living. And I'm making pretty good money from YouTube on those that channel, which once again pays for all this stuff. So was I successful? I think I was. Was Good Talk Radio big? And yep, I walk away when it's at its best. Don't wait till everything crashes and burns or you have a financial problem. Um, do, have fun. If it's not fun anymore, then you should get out of it. Um, you know, it feels empty to not have my routine in the morning and things like that. I I understand that. But at the same time, I've got some other things I was neglecting uh, because I was in here taking care of files and taking care of people's uh, shows and stuff. And it, it, it got kind of old. But at the whole time, until I did the TV part, I was always making money, breaking even or better. So uh, anyway, I hope those were helpful ideas for your new radio station. And also, if you're dealing with a radio station, realize that a lot of them won't charge you as long as you do shout outs for them. And maybe if they had products or something that they're doing that you push their products and you could be uh, on a whole nother platform uh, at, at free and still do your regular podcast. So Food for thought, other people are going to hate me for bringing this stuff up and hate me for the places that are out there charging you for a show. Um, you shouldn't be charged for a show, and you don't really need to. And if you need help, you can always contact me. I can tell you, and I love coaching people and helping them out. And as long as they do something nice for us, we appreciate it too. So, guys, have a great day. Thank you for listening to Easy Street. Uh, please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world, and thanks again. Talk to you later. Bye.
Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.